there was a zone of silence around the direct eruption. So other than the crunching of the forest by the blast, most of the eyewitnesses around the volcano, the immediate area within a few miles of the volcano, described the eruption like a silent movie because most of the sound was going up with the vertical plume and that sound wave was going up and hitting upper layers of the atmosphere and bouncing off. So people heard it in the outskirt area, outlying areas of Seattle. They heard it on the Oregon coast. Uh, but people right around the volcano uh, heard it was pretty silent. The part, the missing part of Mount St. Helens was mostly displaced by gravity. The volcano had been wedged apart and the thing came down and this was the largest landslide at the time in recorded history. The old valley is 150 feet below us, so this is all new. All new surface, this was all new as of May 18th, 1980. The larger trees here are red alders, and they're a, a, a rapidly growing um, prime, you know, colonizing tree in this part of the world. But just tune your eye and look in around us here, and you'll see that most of the northwest evergreen or conifer species are here, Douglas fir, um, Western hemlock, lodgepole pine, noble fir, and silver fir are all growing out here. There was absolutely no life. Um, the first time I had encountered this valley was a year later, and we surveyed a mile long line. We didn't find a single plant. As a matter of fact, it was great excitement when we found a spider web. So it's easy to forget that you know, how lifeless this was. 30 years later, we're standing in a forest. Just to see anything alive at all was amazing because the area looked so monochromatic gray and brown, almost lunar in its, in its appearance. But then, you know, once we realized that the timing was everything and things had survived, we began to see signs of life everywhere. So to watch that um, be the kind of the the kernel around which the whole ecosystem is reestablished has been completely amazing. And to me, that the, the pro progression from uh, just a few things to now in the last five years or so, five to ten years, things have really picked up. And so an, a landscape that looked mostly gray and brown is now increasingly looking green. There are places like this pond behind us that are essentially small watersheds. and. Um, there, you can see where the groundwater comes to the surface at the pond. And if you look, the alder forest around the pond is much more well-developed and mature. This area is virtually a flower garden in parts of the year, and it's covered with wildflowers, lupins, and penstemons, and paintbrush. And of course, with that food source, lots of birds and small mammals and elk. Everything's back, and uh, it's quite a busy place with wildlife.